just when you thought it was safe to watch videos on the internet. Around the Verse is back. I'm Sean Tracy. Howdy ho! Sorry. That's I right. I had you to. are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sean Tracy. And I'm Steve Bender. That's right, you are. <laughs> That's right, you are. All right. All right, now that now right, we're, we got we're that out of our out. systems, we okay. got that out. The one and only. We yeah, love that's it. what I'll say. The one and only. All right, we're gonna get it this time. All right, All right, we started. I'm Sean Tracy, and I'm Steve Bender, and for the next seven exciting days and eight romantic nights, we'll be your hosts. Oh yes, we will, Sean, and we've got some fun stuff on deck for today's update. We'll meet a member of the Hurston family look inside Lorville's Central Business District, and take a trip to Lyria. But first, let's see what the community has been doing in-game. The Citizens Coffee Company organization recently held an event that they called the Coffee Cup. <laughs> Clever. Clever. Orgs affiliated with the Citizens Coffee Companies were invited to partake in the event. Two teams of 23 players each were given two start points on selling and two hours of game time. Their objective, mine as much as you can with three misc prospectors and carry the ore to Grim Hex to sell for profit. The other 20 players on each team acted as security, duking it out all around Grim Hex. As you can see in this footage captured by Marshall Quinn, the entire area became a battlefield. Pretty wild. Yeah, really cool. Now on to development. Let's head to Lyria, one of the moons of the upcoming planet Arcor. Environment Art is working on its various ecosystems along with the global palette. Environment Art is also working on the Lorville Central Business District, a whole new explorable part of the city that includes the massive Hurston Dynamics building that looms over everything. Here are Yussi Catelli, Boy Sikaman, and Stefan Damrau to shed more light on what goes into bringing this new area to life. Right now, we are working on the uh, Central Business District, the CBD for short. We all refer to it as the CBD. Uh, which is the Hurston family's headquarters in Lawville on Hurston. It's a big expansion in terms of being a very different kind of place. So for us right now, the challenge has kind of been, what's the CBD look like inside? Like we all know Lawville from the outside, but from the inside, it's a completely different beast. And it's a chance for us to do something which we've never done before with Star Citizen, which is culture. Everything is different. The materials are different. The architecture is different. The lighting, the feeling is very different. It's not somewhere you go that's been built by builders or just you know cobbling things together, like just paneling there, functional, everything is just supposed to work. The CBD is about the Hurston family showing off. We're building essentially like a family heirloom, like the building itself is like something which belongs to the family. Uh, as artists, how do we kind of communicate these things to you, like what kind of people the Hurston family is? Our tools here are really contrast, where we sort of want to pull you in from the outside of the gritty, sort of the, the, the gritty world of Lawville, of L19, and and the city in general, and then put you in and show you something extremely different. And uh, for us, it's a lot of like, instead of having these blocky kind of sort of Lego block shapes, which we usually have when we build, not just our citizen, but most sci-fi is kind of built in this very modular way. When I work with, more th like with things that flow into each other, things that communicate weight, uh, which communicates elegance, like, does it, does it need to be gold everywhere? No, but, it, <laughs> but the Hurston family would do that. They're that kind of family. And in general, it's about sort of capturing a feeling of, of um, putting you in someone's home rather than someone's kind of backyard. And from the, from the train station, then you go up and we put you into the main hall. We have this very, very nice transitional space, which is sort of meant to sort of make you feel like, to, to put you in a very small, space like to, to make it a bit claustrophobic and then we send you into the main hall which is where you find the gigantic statue of Archibald Hurston and a lot of the weapons uh, from Hurston Dynamics on display in, in, in cases and little plinths of obsidian around the room as well as uh, to the to the right you have the HD showcase um, where you can actually buy all the Hurston weapons go and have a browse it's a very, it's a very nice design showroom and on the left you have the transfers uh, where you can do all your trading, and uh, there's also a mission giver in there as well. So currently I'm working on the CBD transfers. This room, it's set up kind of like a boot pit. So you have a lot of overhang in the architecture, 
it makes you feel kind of small and daunting, I guess, to, to, to walk there and, and see all this, this massive CBD structure hanging over you. The room is kind of split up into two areas where you have these, th this main uh, trading pit where the player will walk on the first floor. And then you have the bottom floor um, where you can see the AI battle it out, uh, like kind of, yeah, same as in Wall Street or uh, any other like big trading, uh, trading area that, that currently exists. And then you have the, the room in the back, which is the room of Mr. Constantine Hurston. So Constantine Hurston is a lower member of the family who wants to earn a spot higher in the family. So he's, he's working day and night to, to earn that spot. And he's going to be the mission giver as well, where you will get your missions from coming with, with this update. I'm working on the HD showcase, which is uh, in addition to the transfers, which Boy is doing is uh, the other shop in the CBD. The main point of this room is kind of, you can imagine it as an equivalent of a space version of a car dealership, which uh, has the Hurston weapons on display and they show them off and you can walk up to them and buy them. And obviously it's been kind of an iterative process to getting to the result we have now. Uh, what also was challenging was just with this new art style we're trying out to get the balance right between details and big shapes. So usually uh, with the stuff we've done earlier it's been more about the, the detail on the architecture uh, itself. While with this one it's having these really big shapes work together and more about the whole read of the environment and not so much about a tiny bolt somewhere. So for the showcase one of the challenges was uh, because of the architecture of the room which in essence is one big block where the art style will go in so it's kind of all merging together almost as if it would be made of one piece. And the challenging part was to bring all the different shapes together without them having uh, looking weird or awkward. For example, there's a lot of different angles running into each other and kind of just getting that to work without the player feeling weird while walking in the room was a bit of a challenge. What's been really cool about the CBD is just generally this sort of different art style we're doing now. Um, so before we had usually this kind of more grungy, dirty places and CBD is kind of the other side, uh, the other extreme. It's a really kind of fancy, nice materials, big shapes and not so much high frequency details but more the shapes and the materials speaking. So it's been a nice change compared to uh, what we've done in the past. The props team is contributing to the central business district as well with some of the bureaucratic set pieces we see here. The new area will include a new mission giver like Constantine Hurston. Here's senior character artist Claudio Clemente with more on this new character. So Constantine Hurston is one of those characters that uh, here in Foundry 42 we have created entirely from scratch. He is a character that has to act like uh, he is a uh, always overwhelmed by, by work and he's trying his best to make a career in his, uh, in his own department. That is where we try to give that feeling while you are uh, sculpting the model and uh, actually finishing the touch with uh, texturing and materials. When we start with this kind of characters, uh, we have to start from, uh, from a proper 3D scan that gives us the perfect vo volumes based on the photo shooting of the actor. We try to keep the resemblance with the actor as uh, constant and uh, as high detail as possible, but unfortunately the 3D scan has a limit about the details that it can reach. So what you can see is that uh, even after that we have made the 3D scan, the detail is washed out. And what, what we try to achieve uh, is implementing all those details that we are not able to achieve with the 3D scan. That is where this starts to become a really long process of uh, tweaking in order to sculpt all the details that are actually missing, especially because I wanna, we want this kind of uh, relief detail to overlap the, the color textures. But as you can see, the quality becomes really sharp and really detailed. Once we have done this, we have to create the proper missing channel of uh, texturing. What we have is uh, the scanning uh, details of color that comes out from the, the photo shooting, which is still imperfect because it contains a lot, a lot of information and a lot of noise uh, that is due to lighting environment and the bruising and scratches on the textures. What we try to, to arrive is something like this. 
flatted down result with sharp details and uh, a perfect amount of uh, balancing between the details of the textures and all, all those irregularities uh, that we try to remove uh, in order to make mm, the character to look like uh, more natural and fresh. The final result is something like this. Uh, we have our setup of lighting uh, and uh, with the help of the shader that we have created we can actually verify that everything is working accordingly, even the translucency in the ears uh, and the greasiness of mm, the skin. Once everything it is done, uh, this is moving to other departments that are actually involved, that are actually implemented uh, the animation, the bespoke one that has been created for this character. We will apply the hairstyle that has been created specifically for him, a costume, and he is going to be set inside the game. Uh, and that's it for what concerns this character. Thanks, Claudio. Well, it looks like we made it through another one, John. Just by the skin of our teeth, barely. So tune in to a new episode of Reverse the Verse Live tomorrow on Twitch, where John Crew will be answering many ship-related questions that weren't answered in the anniversary roundtables. So thanks, as always, to our subscribers who sponsor all our shows. Stop, so until next and time, we'll see you around, around the, the verse. Or Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.